can see we get some really nice examples here of a fishing village um, on the river in a mountain landscape so we can see we have the mountains we also have like some kind of like fishing uh, village here we have some boats down here at the bottom hey guys welcome to a new deep learning video in this video here we're going to talk about stable diffusion so in this video here we're going to take a text prompt we're going to pass it through this stable diffusion model and then we're going to look at the results where we like like just generate images with an ai model up here the left top corner and the right top corner here we can see two examples of some outputs that we got from the stable diffusion model and then we're going to talk about like how can we actually like use it we will go in and see some demos and then i'll actually like show you in code how we can set it up in code how we can pass in a prompt to the model and how we can get the output out and save our ai generated image but first of all remember to hit the subscribe button and bell notification under the video only 10 percent of you guys watching these videos here are actually like subscribed to the channel it's just a single click and helps me and the youtube channel out in a massive way you can also become a member of the channel or a patron if you want to have some project help if you have some problems in your own projects and so on so if you're a member or a patron i can help you out on that so first of all in this video here before i'm going to show you some examples and before we're going to jump into the code so i can like see how we can set up this um stable diffusion model in code basically we're just going to have a text prompt we pass it through a model with the hawk and face uh, library or framework that we have used in some of the previous videos if you want to know more about like the hog and face framework and the pipeline function that we're going to use definitely show tech, check those videos out i'm going to like create a whole tutorial about like how we can use hog and face how we can use all the pre-trained model there is on hog and face and so on so definitely check that out it's really cool and really exciting for like deep learning models and ai in general here we're just going to take a quick look at the github repository here for the sta stable diffusion model so this is open source you can use it for whatever you want you can see over here to the right um so right now we can view the license over here as well but this is open source here we can just see the, all the different kind of files so they have like some data they have some models and they also have some scripts so in this video here we're going to cover like text to image so we're going to actually like, convert text to an image so we're going to generate our images with the ai where we just pass in our text prompt we can also use something called like image to image where we can make some different kind of like changes to an image we can just pass in our image to the ai and it will try to make some variations and and change our image a bit depending on like how much we wanted to change we can even pass in a prompt like how do we want to change our image that we pass into the model but that's for another video so again make sure to hit the subscribe button so you'll know when i upload a video about image to image so here we're going to cover text to image and we'll just like scroll down to this github repository here and see it before we're going to jump in see some examples how can we actually like generate these ai images with the text prompt and then i'm going to show you in code as i already said so here we can see stable diffusion was made possible thanks to the collaboration of stability ai and runway and here we can see some of the examples that that is actually like the outputs of this stable diffusion model in another video i'm going to cover the theory behind stable diffusion so we're going to like take a look at how does these like how does this ai here and the deep learning models act like generate these images from just pure text so we're going to look at the theory and all the different kind of technique and approaches that they take to create this really nice model and also how to train it and so on so here we can see that stable diffusion is the latent uh, text to image diffusion model and here we can just see some specifications of it so right now it has like around 500 by 500 images but soon they will act like scale is up to one uh, 1k by 1k image resolution in just a week or something like that so here we can see all the different kind of information we can see some environments for how to set it up with conda um, and also installed a pytorch and so on but i'm going to show you that in code or else if you just want to use it on a, like a website demo i'm also going to show you how you can generate your own images so down here at the bottom we can see like what is act like inside the model architecture of the stable diffusion model version one so we can see it has something with uh, some down samplings it has the unit architecture and it also uses the clip which we covered in the transformer video here on the channel i'm going to dive way deeper into this stable diffusion model here and the architecture in another video so here we're just going to scroll through it we can also see the weights here so they have some different kind of weights for uh, some different checkpoints right now the newest checkpoint is version 1.4 which is also what we're going to run with the hawk and face framework later on in this video then we can see some text images with stable fusion so here you just pass in some prompts to the actual like ai and then the ai generated these images we can see it's really the details are just like really really crazy when we look at them and, and like these are things that we can't even imagine we just pass in text to the ai it generates these images here with really high details 
we can just see like this robot here holding some kind of like cop or this teddy bear we also have like some kind of like really detailed monster we can even create like some really nice um towns buildings with like plants growing on them like only that imagination is is the limit here so basically we can create everything with these uh, text to image stable diffusion models we can also scroll scroll down a bit here where we can see like how we can actually like integrate them so this is what i'm going to show you in the code so basically this is the simplest way to just download and and just sample the stable diffusion or just pass in an image it just generates an image after you have actually like um passed in this prompt and then you can just directly save the image so this is the only code that you actually need to be able to generate these images here from the ai we can also do image modification with stable fusion as we talked about which is image to image where we just like change up the images so for example let's say we have a drawing like this and we want to create some variations or we just want to create like a more photorealistic image of it then we can actually like also get these outputs as i'm going to show you here where like the colors are just really good the details are are just crazy and you can't even imagine that this is an ai that is just generating these images here within minutes after you're passed in your prompt and also your images through the model so the first web demo here that we're going to look at is within Hawk and Face. So we just go to the Hawk and Face website and this is a space that is created for the stable diffusion model. So this is basically just a demo. Here you just have a command prompt or like you have a text prompt here where you pass in the text that you want to generate your image of. And then when you have passed in your text into your prompt here, you basically just hit this button over here to the right, generate image. I already have a prompt here and I've generated the images. It takes around like 100 to 200 seconds to actually like generate these images and you will get uh, a couple of examples down here at the bottom. So this is one way that you can actually like access this diffusion model here through the API. But you can also try something uh, called Dream Studio, which is in beta, as I'm also going to show you. So here we can see some of the examples I've just passed in this prompt. So yes, I know the secrets of the circuit in mind. It's a flaming, uh, it's a flaming wonder telepath by uh, some artist oil on canvas and then i just hit generate images and then we can see we get this really nice colored images here with all the different kind of like details so here we can see that a flaming wonder telepath so we have some kind of like flames we have some wandering from a girl here and then we also like have a telepath to to somewhere so this is really crazy uh like you can't even like generate this art here it will take like at weeks month to actually like generate this art here in person here we just have an ai we pass in the text and it generates these images it's just really mind-blowing and this can be used for a lot of different kind of things and who, who knows even like what is artist going to be in the future when we just have these ai that can generate these images and this art here uh with this beat here and of course this is the first version that they're just going to like keep improving on these models here make them more like um make more applications around it and stuff like that so only them and imagination can like limit what is possible with ai in the future this is just a sample of like sharing what are we actually like, capable of doing with ai today and we get these really nice details within minutes so another one i'm going to show is this dream studio so basically here i'll just have a couple of prompts that we can go in and pass through so this is also from uh, stability ai over here to the right, we can choose between the width and the height. We can actually like upscale this image to 1K by 1K. We can also see a configuration scale over here to the right. So how much we will actually like keep the values uh, to the closer or like we will hi the higher values here will keep your images closer to the prompt. So the higher this like score here or like the scale is, uh, the more um, the more the images will be um, as you have in your command prompt. So we won't get that much of variation. You can also set the number of images and also uh, how many steps you want when actually like generating your images. So this will be the diffusing part. But here I'm just going to have a couple of prompts here. So just have all these prompt examples here that we can go through some of them. So one of them I want to go through is here a fishing, a fishing village on a river in a mountain landscape by Casper David Friedrich. We're just going to copy paste this prompt and then we can pass the, paste it in down here at the bottom. Then we can basically just hit this green button here at the bottom and it will actually like generate our images. We're just going to choose nine images and then we can see here that it is actually like generating our images. This actually like runs pretty fast when we're using this Dream Studio beta that they're created compared to um, the, the, the space inside of the Hawking face. So here we can see we get some different kind of like uh, portraits here, but we can see we get some really nice examples here of a fishing village um, on the river in a mountain landscape. So we can see we have the mountains. We also have like some kind of like fishing 
a village here. We have some boats down here at the bottom. Um, so we actually have this mountain landscape at the background and also we have the river and this is the, the style of Casper David uh, Frederick. So this, these are actually like really nice images that we're able to generate with our AI. This is only the imagination. We can try some of the other different kind of like uh, prompts that I have in here. So let's try to find some good ones. Um, we'll abandon by Vibrant. Um, let's try to find this sci-fi with the alien here. A shipwreck of a sci-fi alien desert landscape. Let's just copy paste that into the Dream Studio beta. And we hit Dream. We're just going to generate nine images again. And here we hit Dream and then it will just process our images. It will generate these nine AI images and then we can see the results. So here we can see the results again. We get really nice details. Here we get a bit more variation, but here we have a, sh a shipwreck on a sci-fi alien desert. So this should be some kind of like uh, sci-fi alien desert landscape where we have a shipwreck on top of it. But here again, only that imagination is the limit. We can try out some different kind of prompts here as well. You can try it on your own. You can basically just go to this Dream Studio beta website. But now we're going to see how we can actually set it up in our own code and generate images in there. So this is the last part of this video. We're going to jump into Google Colab and then we're just going to set up our diffusion, stable diffusion model with the Hawk and Face framework. And then we're going to run the code as we saw on the GitHub. So basically here, we just have a couple lines of code that we need to go through and then we can pass in our prompt, generate our images and save them. So here, first of all, we need to pip install the diffusers and the transformers and also SciPy. So the diffusers here and the transformers are from the Hawk and Face uh, framework. So we're going to use that so we can directly go in and use their uh, pipeline function to load the pre-trained models of the stable diffusion model. Again, I have other videos here on the channel about how we can use the Hawk and Face pipeline and also the Hawk and Face framework to load pre-trained models. So now we can see that we have successfully installed all the different kind of things here that we wanted. Now we can actually go in and log into the Hawk and Face uh, framework because we actually like, need a token. So here we can, first of all, we need to generate a token. So we need to log into the Hawk and, Hawk and Face hub. And then we can basically just get a token. We're just going to copy paste that, go back, paste our a token into it, hit enter, and then we'll then log into Hawk and Face through uh, Google Colab here. So we can see login successful. And here we can see that our token has also been saved. So now we're able to actually like go in and use Hawk and Face inside of Google Colab. So now we're going to use the pipeline to run the stable diffusion model on a prompt that we're going to specify. First of all, we need to import Torch. We're going to, from Torch, we're going to import Autocast so we can actually use the CUDA, so the GPU, so we can speed up the process um, of our image and all like the generation of our images from our prompt. Then we're going to, we're going to use the pipeline function here or like the, the, the hog and face framework. So we have stable diffusion pipeline. We import that from the diffusers that we just downloaded from uh, hog and face. And then we can just use this function or method called from pre-train. So we're basically just going to load in uh, some pre-trained weights from the Hawk and Face framework. We're going to have uh, to put that um, put to put that model on the GPU, and then we can basically just do a forward pass of our uh, prompt here into the neural network, and then we'll get the image out as an output. So here we're just going to specify the model ID and then use authentication token. We set that equal to true. The model ID here is Compvis, so this is the repository of the stable diffusion model uh, that we also saw on. GitHub, and then we just go inside, take Stable Diffusion version 1.4, which I also show you on the GitHub is the latest version um, as I'm making this video. Then we set the device equal to CUDA to, to, to speed up the generation of our AI images. Then we just have pipe 2.2, and then we just specify where we want to put our pipeline. We want to put that on the GPU using CUDA. Then we basically just have our prompt here. You can just take an arbitrary prompt. Here we just have a photo of an astronaut. Uh, astronaut uh, riding a horse on Mars. Basically, you can just go in here and take all of these other different kind of like um, prompts here. You can try to like figure out your own, try some other different kind of things and see what this model here is actually like capable of. Then we say with Autocast and then we're using CUDA. Then we have our image, which is equal to our pipeline. We pass in the prompt and then we have our guidance scale. So how much do we actually like want to guide our um, model here towards our prompt? And then we just take a sample of that. And then we're going to take the serif element of that because that will act like be the image that we're going to return. Then we're going to save our image and then we're also going to display it here in Google Colab. So now we're able to run this block of code here and it will act like create our pipeline with the pre-trained model. It will take the prompt, pass it through the model and then we'll get the output image out here. 
then we're just going to save it here in our uh, directory in our Google Colab. So basically, first of all, here we need to download all these different kind of things. So this is basically the model that we're going to download from the pre-trained weights. Here we can see it downloads around like four gigabytes, which is the size of the model uh, or like the pre-trained model here that we're going to use with Hawking Phase. So basically like four gigabytes for the capabilities uh, that this model here is capable of. It's just really crazy that it is only like four gigabytes uh, large. They actually have a model right now created with only two gigabytes, but it is not released yet. So that's even going to be even more even more crazy we only have it like we have a two gigabytes model where we can generate all these images here from and it will basically just keep improving over time uh, for all the different kind of versions of stable diffusion so here we can see the output image of our astronaut uh, astronaut riding on a horse on mars so this is one of the outputs here and again in a second i'm just going to show you how we can create multiple outputs but this is basically the prompt here that we just passed into our model and then we got the image out here um, as the output and then we're basically just saving it and also displaying it uh, down here in Google Colab. So this is actually like a really nice image. We get both the horse, the astronaut and also uh, it is riding on Mars. We can also see over here in our folder we will also save it. So we have this uh, astronaut rides horse.png. We can open it up here in Google Colab as well. So we'll get it over here to the right. Basically this is our image and we can just directly save it to our uh, computer if we want to do that. Here, we're just going to cancel out this again, and then we'll go down and see how we can actually like generate multiple images from a single prompt as we also saw in the web demos. So here, we're basically just going to run it. We just specify the number of images. We also have a prompt, and then we just have a for loop running through all the number of images. We just have autocast CUDA, and then we basically just append the output here, which is our image sample. We just append that to a list, and then down here at the bottom, we just have a a for loop running through all the images that were generated and then we're just going to save them one by one and then basically here we're just running this block of code to see all the different kind of like variations that we'll get off the images from only passing in one prompt and in this example we're just generating three different kind of images from this single prompt you can also choose like 9 10 15 or so on whatever you want as you also saw in the web demos so now we're done generating these three different kind of images and then we have just saved it into our a folder here so if you go over to the left we have this gen image 0 1 and 2 and this will just be different kind of like images of Kermit the Frog on an iron throne so this will be the prompt that we have passed in then we can see these three different kind of images again you can choose like 10 15 20 images you can just choose yourself that is also why it's good to use the code here and there's not a limit on the number of credits that you have uh, compared to if you use for example like dream studio or something like that and even like running this code here is really fast when you use the CUDA GPU here from um, Google Colab. So here we're going to see the examples. So first of all, this will be the first image. Here we can see Kermit the Frog. I'll just make it a bit larger. So here we can see the example. We can see that we have this uh, nice frog here on top uh, on top of a throne. So this is a, co a correct output. Uh, basically, this is the first image that it has generated. We can also see the second image. So here we can see this is another throne. We still have Kermit the Frog on top of a throne. We have some text up here at the top. It doesn't really make that much sense here. And if we look at the last example, we also get another variation. We have this kind of like Game of Thrones throne, which is also an iron throne. Uh, and then we have Kermit the Frog here. So probably the third example here is, uh, is pretty, pro probably like the coolest. The first one here is also good, but it's rather simple. But the last one here is pretty good. We have some nice details and some nice colors. Uh, we have actually like a lot of details here in the iron throne and also like some kind of like cape on top of this kermit frog so this is really cool we can do a lot of different kind of things with ai generated images i'm really excited for this we're going to create more videos here on the channel about it so thank you guys for watching this video here and again remember to hit the subscribe button and bell notification on the video so you get a notification when i upload new videos about like ai generated images deep learning in general like theory behind deep learning or computer vision so I have tutorials about that. I'll link to one of them up here or else I'll see you next video, guys. Bye for now.